In this video, I will be discussing about Linux algorithm. It is used to solve maximum flow problem. So the goal here is to find out how much stuff we can push from the source to the sink. So this problem is known as maximum flow problem. So if we are given this graph and let's say S is our source vertex and T is our sink vertex or the target vertex. Now this maximum flow problem is governed by some rules. The first rule that we have is that flow should be less than or equal to capacity. So all of the edges of this graph has some weights. So these weights can be thought of as capacity. Let's think of this entire graph as a water network and the edges as water pipes. Now the edge weights are the maximum capacity of these pipes. So how much water can flow on this pipe per second? So that is the capacity of this pipe. And we can define the flow as the current amount of water that we are allowing to pass through our edge. So the first rule of this problem is flow should be less than or equal to capacity. So for the edge D to T, the maximum capacity is 10. So the flow can be anything from 0 till 10, but it cannot exceed 10. So in this way, every edge has a restriction that flow should be less than or equal to capacity. Now the second rule that we have here is incoming is equal to outgoing. So this means that water conservation principle is applicable. At each of the vertex, the amount of water that is incoming should be equal to the amount of water that is outgoing. Except the source and the sink vertex because we are assuming that the water flow begins at the source and it terminates at the sink. But for rest of the vertices, the incoming water should be equal to the outgoing water. So now keeping in mind these two rules, we have to find the maximum flow that can reach the sink vertex. So to solve this maximum flow problem, DINIC algorithm is used. So we have discussed one algorithm before, which was the ford fulkerson algorithm. That algorithm is also used to solve the maximum flow problem. But this DINIC algorithm is more efficient than the ford fulkerson algorithm. If you want to understand ford fulkerson algorithm, I have made a video explaining it in detail. I will link that in the description. Now let's see what is DINIC's algorithm. Before we see the pseudocode, let's try to understand the few terminologies that are used here. First term is the residual capacity. It is the capacity of the edge after subtracting the flow from the maximum capacity. So at each step of the algorithm, we'll try to increase the flow. So the residual capacity is the capacity that will be left after we subtract that flow from the maximum capacity. The second term is residual graph. So this is the same graph as the original graph, but instead of the maximum capacities, we use the residual capacities. So that gives us the residual graph. And the third term is augmenting level path. Now augmenting means increasing. So augmenting level path is a simple path in the residual graph where each node has a level less than the next node and all the edges have positive residual capacity. So when we talk about level, we are talking about the BFS traversal, what is the level for each of the vertices. So we'll see in the pseudocode what we mean by the augmenting level path. So now let's have a look at the pseudocode. So we have a maximum flow variable. Here we'll save the result. So this will give us the maximum flow. Then for each edge UV in graph, we set the flow equal to weight of the edge. So let's create this graph. Then the next step is, while there is augmenting level path from S to T in this residual graph. So this is our residual graph. Now we have to find increasing level path from source to the sink. So this is our sink or target and this is our source. Now when we're talking about augmenting level path, we need to use BFS, which is the breadth first search. So if you have doubts on how BFS works, I will link a video in the top right corner explaining BFS in detail. So what do we do in BFS is, from the source vertex, we spread in all directions. If zero is the level of the source vertex, now B and C both are at one distance from the source. They are one edge apart, so they will be at one level. Now S, B and C are visited. D is at one edge apart from B, so it will be at level two. Similarly, E is also one edge apart from C, so it will also be level two. Now T is one edge apart from D and D, e, so it will be at level three. So we have assigned levels to each of the nodes. Now this while condition says while there is augmenting level path from S to T. So we can see here there is a path from S to B to D and to T. So this condition is true. So we enter in the while loop. So now it says assign level to vertices. 
So we have already assigned level to the vertices which are highlighted in blue color. Then the next step is while more flow is possible from S to T. So here we can see we can pass flow. So we enter inside this while loop. So in this while loop, we find minimum residual capacity in the path. So we can see from S to B, the residual capacity is 10. From B to D, residual capacity is 4. And from D to T, residual capacity is 10. So the minimum residual capacity here is 4. Then the next step is we add this minimum capacity in the maximum flow. So we add 4 here. And then we check for each edge UV in this path. We subtract the minimum cap from flow in the direction U to V and we add the minimum cap in the reverse direction. So for each edge in this path. So let's pick the edge S to B. So flow of S to B will be the initial flow which is 10 minus minimum cap which is 4. So it will be 6 and flow from B to S will be the initial flow which was 0 plus the minimum capacity which is 4. So it will be 4. Now let's draw this in the graph. So S to B is 6 and B to S is 4. So in residual graph we can also have those edges which are not present in the original graph. These edges are known as backward edges and the edges which are present in the original graph those are known as forward edges. So backward edges are required because at some later point in the algorithm we may decide that we want to reduce the capacity in the original direction. So the concept of backward edges is used. So now in this path we have the next edge which is B2D. We calculate flow for B2D. It is the original flow which is 4 minus minimum cap and flow from D to B is the original flow plus the minimum cap which is equal to 4. Now let's draw this in the graph. Whenever there is an edge with zero weight, we need not draw it in the graph. So I have skipped the edge from B to D because it has a weight of zero. Now let's pick the next edge which is D to T. Now flow of D to T is the initial flow which is 10 minus minimum cap. So it becomes 6 and flow from T to D is 0 plus the minimum capacity which is 4. So let's draw this. So we have finished this path from S to T. Now we again come in this while loop. We check while more flow is possible from S to T. So whenever we are trying to find the more flow, we have to check the augmenting level path. So here one direction can be from S we can go to B, from B we can go to C, from C we can go to E, from E we can go to T. But if you see the levels here, at S the level is 0, at B also level is 1, at C level is 1 and at E level is 2 and T level is 3. So here B and C both have level of 1. So this is not an augmenting level path. So we should not take this because at every step we have to take a path which is augmenting level. So the next path that we can take is from S we can go to B, from B we can go to E and from E we can go to T. Level of S is 0, level of B is 1, level of E is 2 and level of T is 3. So for each of the nodes level is increasing so this path is valid. So it means more flow is possible from S to T. So we come inside this while loop. So I've drawn the same graph again. And this time we'll take the direction from S to B to E to T. From S to B we have capacity of 6. From B to E we have capacity of 8. And from E to T we have capacity of 10. So the minimum cap here is 6. So we add 6 in the maximum flow. And now for each of the edges in this path we have to compute the flow. So flow from S to B is the initial flow which is 6 minus the minimum cap. So it becomes 0. And flow from B to S is the initial flow which is 4 plus the minimum cap which is 6. So it becomes 10. So let's draw this in the graph. So I've skipped the edge from S to B because it has a weight of 0. Now the next edge is B to E. So flow from B to E is the initial flow which is 8 minus minimum cap which is 6. So it becomes 2. And from E to B is the initial flow which is 0 plus the minimum cap which is 6. So we draw this in the graph. Now the next edge is E to T. So flow from E to T is the initial flow 10 minus minimum cap which is 6 and from T to E is initial flow 0 plus the minimum cap which is 6. So it becomes 6. 
So let's draw this. So we have covered all the edges from S to B to E to T. Now we again come here while more flow is possible from S to T. So if you see here, the flow which is possible is from S we can go to C, from C we can go to E, and from E we can go to T. So if you see the levels here, S we have level of 0, at C we have level of 1, at E we have level of 2, and T we have level of 3. So this is also augmenting level path, so we can go in this direction. So I've drawn the same graph again. Now let's check each of the edges from S to C to E to T. So for S to C, the residual capacity is 10, for C to E capacity is 9, and for E to T capacity is 4. So the minimum capacity is 4, and we add that in the maximum flow. Now we have to process each of the edges in this path. So first we process the edge from S to C. So flow from S to C will become the initial flow which is 10 minus the capacity which is 4. So it becomes 6 and from C to S it becomes 0 plus 4. So let's draw this in the graph. Now the edge C to E. So flow from C to E is the initial flow which is 9 minus minimum cap which is 4. And from E to C is 0 which is the initial flow plus the minimum cap. So let's draw this. And the next edge is from E to T. So flow from E to T is the initial flow which is 4 minus the minimum cap which is 4. And from T to E is the initial flow which is 6 plus the minimum cap which is 4. So let's draw this. So I've skipped the edge from E to T because it has a weight of 0. Now we have processed all the edges in the path S, C, E, T. So now we have to check whether more flow is possible from S to T. So now we see that there is a path from S to C to E to D and to T. S has a level of 0, C has a level of 1, E has a level of 2, D has a level of 2 and E has a level of 3. So this is not an augmenting level path so we cannot take this. So more flow is not possible from S to T. So we again come here while there is augmenting level path P from S to T. We have to again do a BFS traversal in this graph. So let me draw this graph again. So now we have to find the augmenting level path from S to T in this residual graph. So at S we have a level of 0. Now it has one outgoing edge towards C. So C has a level of 1. From C we have outgoing edge towards E. So E has a level of 2. From E outgoing edges are towards B and D. So both B and D will have a level of 3 and T has a level of 4. So now these are the new levels of this graph. So if we find the augmenting level path, it is from S we can go to C, from C we can go to E, from E we can go to D, and from D we can go to T. So at S you can see the level is 0, at C it is 1, at E it is 2, D it is 3, and T it is 4. So augmenting level path is there, so we go inside the while loop. So levels we have already signed here. We check while more flow is possible from S to T. So we can send more flow in this direction. So we go in the while condition. We find the minimum capacity in this path. From S to C the flow is 6. From C to E the flow is 5. From E to D the flow is 6. And from D to T the flow is 6. So the minimum is 5. And we add 5 in the maximum flow. Now for each of the edges in this path, we do this for loop. So let's process these edges one by one. First we have the edge from S to C. So flow from S to C is the initial flow which is 6 minus minimum cap which is 1. And from C to S it is 4 plus minimum cap which is 5. So let's change these. Now for C to E, flow of C to E is the initial flow which is 5 minus the minimum cap so it becomes 0 and from E to C it is 9. So C to E is 0 so we can skip this edge and from E to C it is 9. Now from E to D so flow from E to D is the initial flow which is 6 minus the minimum cap and from D to E it is the initial flow which is 0 plus the minimum cap so it becomes 5. 
so let's draw this now the next stage is from d to t so flow from d to t is the initial flow which is 6 minus minimum cap and from t to d is 4 plus minimum cap so it becomes 9 so we have processed all the edges in this path now we again see while there is more flow possible from s to t so if we check here if we go from s to c from c we cannot go anywhere so more flow is not possible in this path so we again come here in this while loop if there is an augmenting level path from s to t so if we again do the bfs traversal of this graph we cannot do beyond c because from c there is no outgoing edge so this while loop will also terminate because there is no augmenting level path from s to t so the maximum flow that we have obtained is 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 so it becomes 19 so this is our maximum flow so as you can see here to find the augmenting level path we use the bfs traversal and for each bfs traversal we find how much flow we can pass in that direction so basically this is using a dfs traversal so for each call to bfs we are doing multiple dfs traversals to find out if more flow is possible in those directions that is why this algorithm is faster than the edmund Karps or the ford fulkerson algorithm now once we have understood the pseudo code let's try to implement this in c so all the code that i'll be showing is available in my github repository link of that is available here and as well as in the description now let's have a look at the code so in the main function i've created this graph i've initialized all the edges so from 0 to 1 the weight is 10 so in this manner i've added all the edges i've used the adjacency matrix here because it is easier to find the weight of the edge given both the vertices once i've initialized the graph I call this function dinx algorithm where I pass the graph, the start vertex 0 and the sync vertex 5. In this function, in the first step I check if the source and the sync vertex are same, then I return minus 1. Then I've created a residual graph which is the copy of the original graph and I've created a vector level in which I will be saving all the levels of this graph. In the first step I check if there is a augmenting level path from source to the sync. So I do a BFS traversal. So this is a simple BFS function. I create a queue, I pass the source vertex, and then I process all the vertices in BFS manner. And here I'm also saving the levels for each of the vertices. So once I've done the BFS traversal, I check if I'm able to reach the sync vertex or not. So if at the end of the BFS traversal, level of the sync is greater than zero, then I return a true. Otherwise, I say that augmenting level path is not found, so I return a false. If augmenting level path is found, I create a count vector in which I store how many neighbors I have visited and I pass this in the send flow function. So in this send flow function, I am checking if I can pass more flow in the levels that were created using the BFS. So in the first step, I check if the sync has reached. If it is reached, I return the flow. Then I process each of the edges one by one and I only go to those nodes which are at a higher level than the previous nodes. I find what is the minimum flow that can be passed from the U to the sink. So once I find the minimum capacity, I subtract that from the forward edge and I add that in the reverse edge. So in this manner, I will check if how many times more flow is possible and at each call, I will add that in the maximum flow. So once I find out if no more flow is possible, then I again do a BFS traversal and try to find out next augmenting level path that is possible. If I find again augmenting level path, then I do the same process again. If there is no augmenting level path, then I return the maximum flow and I print that in the main function. Now let's see the output of this program. So as you can see, the output is 19. So as you've discussed, this Dynix algorithm is faster than the Edmund Karps or Ford Fulkerson algorithm. Complexity of Dynix algorithm is order of E V square. Whereas the complexity for Ford Fulkerson or the Edmund Karps algorithm was order of V E square. So this algorithm performs better than the Edmund Karp or the Ford Fulkerson algorithm. That was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.